Hi. Uh, what's up? Uh, I have a question about the fixing the UI. Okay. So, like, I've been, like, messing around with it for, like, past 10 minutes, and I, like, still have no clue, like, what to do. I was just, like, add a new widget. Yeah, okay, so you create a new widget, and then you, which is one node, and then right off of that, you put down a add to viewport node. Oh, okay. Yeah, so there's two nodes. You create the widget, and then you add it to the viewport. Wait, where do I add it? Um, there's actually two different places that you have a broken UI, which, are you working on the first one? Uh, you want me to stream? Sure, yeah. So here, here's like, default. I just... <coughs> yeah. So... Uh, it's hard to see. <sighs> um... Can you scroll in a little bit? Oh, yeah. Just changing the stream quality. Okay, so you have your create widget player, and it looks like you've got the right um, widget uh, selected for that. But you drag off of that node, um, off of like the white output. Wait, what? So like, uh, like just this? like leave the node there, and like that white triangle on the right, um, like drag off of it, like oh, and then search for add to viewport. And then you uh, take the return value out of the creating the widget thing and you put it into the target of this one. It's like when you create the widget, it's like uh, you can use that as output. Oh, what I mean, like the, like the create the widget player or the previous uh, node, it has like an output on the right, little blue output. Oh, the return value? Yeah. Oh. On wait, the create wait. widget player widget oh widget. this yeah, yeah, yeah you drag that into there boom and then it should uh should suck oh yep it's not you got it i'm oh, about to go thanks. through the whole thing uh like right now um <laughs> and i will be sharing that um let me just put it on youtube real quick Alright, uh, well, welcome to uh, the stream where we will be fixing um, the broken template for the first week of YTech Cohort 7. Um, we're going to be touching on uh, the basics, a little bit of um, game development. If you're not a part of YTech, um, you cannot get the broken template uh, for yourself, but you can follow along. Uh, if you want to... Uh, sign up for YTech and then be a part of this club for real uh, you can do so there will be a link in the description to sign up if you are a high school student or a recent graduate um, other than that we're gonna get started with uh, the absolute basics which is uh, what to do right after you've downloaded uh, your um, project Actually, let's see, in development, yeah, okay, sure. okay, cool. Um, yeah, so once you've downloaded your uh, project from Google, um, from Google Drive, you will open up your uh, downloads folder on your computer. You see, I just downloaded it again right here. Um, we're going to need to unzip it. If you don't know how to unzip, you can right click and click extract to all, extract, and it's just gonna create a new folder in your downloads folder. 
um, that houses the uh, project. There's two ways to open the project. Um, the easiest way is to uh, navigate to the executable file in this um, in this extracted folder. So double click it, open the project thing, and then right here you'll see like a blue U symbol, and it's got like the name of the project. Um, it's a executable file. If you double click it, it's going to open uh, the project itself. Otherwise, you can open Epic Games, go to the Unreal Engine tab here on the left, go to your library tab at the top, um, install it 5.0 if you don't have it already. Otherwise, you can click launch. It's going to open up the, um, uh, what do you call it, like project manager, I guess is what you call it where you can create or view your projects and so here if you want to open up um, that project that you've just downloaded and extract you click browse at the bottom and then you double click on this blue icon so both ways work although I feel like I've just opened up the wrong project let's see yeah I did Alright, so I'm just going to double click on the extracted one and it will open up the correct project here. Now there's, uh, there's 15 errors that we've put into this template of a game. Uh, and upon completion you will have a like working prototype. <coughs> um, and the goal of week one is to complete, or excuse me, fix all 15 broken things and you'll um, get a portion of the prize pool just for completing all 15 and submitting that. Um, in order to submit, you're going to just uh, create like a little video demonstrating and showing all the things that you fixed, how you fixed them, and like the game running, that kind of stuff. You can put on YouTube, just send it over to me in the Discord server um, and you'll be good to go. Uh, so let's start with um, just reviewing the project. So we've got two levels here for you. We've got like the main menu level which when you play is going to have like a start and exit uh, and we have a second level uh, called top down map uh, double clicking on it it's gonna open it um, which and then this map is basically like the uh, actual game map. It's got a few uh, elements in it um, we'll be going over that in a little bit, uh, but we're going to start with the main menu, um, level, uh, if I can find it, that is, put down maps, start menu, okay, cool. So the first error lies in this level, when we click play, um, you'll notice we've got some big things in there. Uh, the two buttons are starting to be So we're just going to uh, exit the game. Um, and start being short. Um, you know, start the game and navigate to the But when we click start being, we'll open the wrong level. This is just like uh, some start of the world. up and fix that. Um, uh, you'll notice that when I click play, uh, it might look different than how your play is set up. I think by default when you when you click play, it like um, uh, opens a new window and I think that's new editor window. So I personally don't like this. Um, I feel like it uh, slows down my uh, workflow a little bit. So if you come over here and click on these three little dots, you can choose how uh, different ways that you can start like um, prototyping your project when you click play. Um, I prefer selected viewport. So uh, when I hit play, it's just going to open the game in the viewports that I'm trying to do, um, which I prefer. You don't have to do that, um, but I feel like it. But I feel like it helps. Um, Yeah, um, okay, so the first thing that's wrong is that this button 
uh, does not work. Uh, two things that you got to know, or something you have to know first, is that when we hit play, um, we're at these buttons exist on the uh, UI widget, which is uh, on top of the, like, what the camera in game sees. Um, so we're going to have to go and navigate to that widget and fix whatever problem is uh, in it. So, oh, <laughs> maybe we should start with talking about the content browser. So the content browser is basically like, um, acts like uh, a visual representation of like File Explorer. So like um, File Explorer, you've got like uh, actual files and then folders that house other files. Uh, literally the same thing here for the content browser. Uh, it just had like um, structures all the game assets uh, into folders. Uh, so you've got your main content folder um, and then like you've got things that uh, are included with all base projects. We've included a, or we've added a top-down uh, folder. You double click on it, it's got like all the stuff that we've added for like the uh, top-down game, this uh, template. And so we got blueprints, which houses like a bunch of stuff like your players, your interactables, that kind of stuff. Um, we also have maps, which has the two maps that we have for you. Uh, menus that has like some widgets, not all of them. Sounds that, you know, play at certain times like the music and um, uh, like the winning sound. Um, but if you uh, already know like the name of like certain files, it's easiest just to go to the top of the tree and then search for it. It's so, like WID uh, main menu to search for the main menu widget, WID standing for widget. Um, doesn't really help if you don't know the name though. So uh, if we just go to content, we go to top down, we go to menus. We'll see we have the widget for the main menu. Uh, double clicking on that's gonna open up the editor for it. Uh, widgets have like uh, essentially two different editors. You've got like the designer where you can um, edit the look of the widget. So like uh, I've got a button here on the top right. You could theoretically move it over here to the top left um, and it would appear on the top left. This is how you like structured like its visual design. Uh, and if you go to the here to the top right, you've got graph. This houses uh, the logic behind the um, uh, everything that's on your designer panel. Uh, this houses the code that drives it. Uh, and you'll see I've added a orange comment here that marks the first uh, broken thing or error, if you will. Um, uh, here lies our problem that the button does not go to the right map when we click on it. Uh, so these buttons have a, okay, so there's like a, this uh, event action uh, that's like on click start. So this button over here, this start beam button, if you look in the top right on its details panel, you'll see that its name is start. And so we have a on clicked, what's being clicked, that start button, its name is start. Uh, whenever we click it, uh, the computer is going to travel on this white line and then activate this node. Uh, the computer uh, will read and execute code line by line. So it's like just like one straight train track uh, and, and that train track is these white lines. So uh, when you click start, it's going to go here and follow the white line and then activate this node. Uh, and this node is a open level node. So essentially it's just going to transport you to a new level. You can specify what level you want to open, and this is where our problem lies. Right now, we're specifying that we are going to open starter map when we um, open a level. And as you can see, when we click start, uh, which is the wrong level, we do not want that. Um, we want top down level, so we're going to click on this and search top down map. Um, and then compile, save, and then when we start, uh, start bean, it should, there we go, it opens the right level. Um, however, uh, everything looks completely broken, and that would be because of the second error. So congratulations, you just fixed the first error. Uh, now we're moving on to the second error, which is the game will start with the wrong character. Um, so we're going to fix that. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, in our top-down map. Scroll top-down map. Um, we have... Uh, so, like, this is the level. And there is a level editor blueprint. Um, excuse me, like, level blueprint. That, uh, okay, so, look. If you you saw the event graph for the widget, this has is like all the main code uh, for things like our character. Whoa, that's not how you spell character. Um, we like have a event graph that houses all the logic for the character itself. Um, surprising to learn that uh, every level also has its own um, event graph and such like that um so in our level we have a uh default game mode uh object if you'll open that up you can type um bp underscore top down and you'll see we have uh our game mode object and here um we have well the error lies uh, at our default pawn class here right now we have the wrong character selected what's selected is bp player mesh um i'll show you what that is bp player mesh is essentially just like the uh the look of the bean the like physical model of the bean uh and this is actually in our top down character except you'll notice that on its event graph it has no logic whatsoever and its viewport it's missing uh, some components that are actually on our uh, normal character like this camera here uh, if you look in the top left you'll see like the components panel it's outlines like all of the actual components uh, and our player mesh is actually missing a few of them that's because he doesn't actually have any logic and we're not actually supposed to be using him to play. We want to be using our top-down character to play. Um, so we want to change our default pawn class in our top-down game mode to our top-down character. He's right here, but you can search for him uh, by typing BP top down character. Boom, got him. All right, now if we compile and save and we start our level, uh, yep, we got the right character uh, in our thing. Um, however, it uh, unfortunately does not work. I can move up, but can't move down left or right with W A S and D. Uh, there lies our next problem. Uh, if you haven't already done this before, uh, one uh, it would be way faster to uh, fix all the errors from here on out if you were to open up the top-down map. Uh, instead of the main menu that way when you click play you don't have to hit start bean uh, so if you want to do that come down here to the content browser and then go to uh, top down map and double click it open it and it's going to replace the start menu uh, and then now whenever you click play it's just going to open the level as if you had just clicked um, start bean on our main menu all right so problem number three is the bean can only move up um, there's a few different things that are wrong with that. These two different things lie within the project settings and the actual character blueprint itself. We're going to start with the errors that lie within our project settings. So if you'll come up here to edits and it's very top left, uh, you'll see there's uh, project settings. Click that. It's going to open up a new window with your project settings. Now project settings has, you know, a ton of stuff that you can edit like your, uh, Default maps, your inputs, your, uh, I don't know, tons of stuff. Um, but what we're in interested in right now to fix the issue that is at hand is we want to, or uh, our input, which is uh, listed under engine here on the left. So we click input and you'll see um, lots of settings. What's wrong is that we've incorrectly uh, set up our axis mappings. Um, you'll see that we also have action mappings. Uh, these two are uh, fundamentally different. Action mappings are uh, used for handling uh, button presses that are like uh, 0 or 1. 
and access mappings are to handle inputs that could could theoretically be analog. So, um, like for example, you are either pressing E to interact or you're not. You're not like halfway pressing E, um, and so you're it's either zero or one. This also works on a controller. If you're pressing A to jump, you're either pressing A or you're not pressing A. There's no like halfway pressing A. Um, that's different for axis mappings, which are used to handle like um, moving and looking around because, uh, well, this really applies to a controller. Um, uh, it doesn't really work for W, A, S, and D on a keyboard, but uh, if you're moving with the controller, you can push the joystick halfway uh, and it will return a value of 0 0.5, which is halfway of 1.0. Um, and uh, we use these so that you can um, have full c control of your character with the joystick so that you can walk slower or faster. Um, and these are uh, handled in the axis mappings, but it doesn't really, doesn't really matter for, you know, keyboard since you're, you can't really push W in halfway unless you've got like laser keycaps or whatever laser keys, I don't know, uh, but we don't have that, and nobody really has that, so we're not really worried about that, um, anyway, in our axis mappings, this is where we house our movement input, you'll see we have three, move forward, move right, move left, um, we should have four, our fourth one is going to be move back, um, I believe, it's called move back, uh, yeah. Okay, move back. Um, and in both move left and move back, we are missing keys uh, to actually activate these axis mappings. Uh, so for move left, we want to um, add the A key. Uh, and when you're searching for this, the A key on the keyboard is listed as just A, not like key A, not like keyboard A, just the letter A. So we're going to click that. So now every time we press A, it's going to activate the axis mapping move left. And wherever we have our uh, move left uh, event node, uh, these are going to activate and then do the logic that comes off of that, just like the logic train that we talked about before. Um, uh, yeah, and so we're also going to want to add S for move back. So that every time we press F, S, excuse me, it's going to activate the move back nodes wherever they may be. Um, and so now let's test our game and see what's up. All right, so W works, A does not, D does not, and but S does move us down. All right, cool. So we've fixed the input actions in the project settings. Uh, so now if we go over to our top-down character, uh, you'll see that I have another orange comment that is, um, why are you warning? I'm going to ignore that. <laughs> um, so yeah, move left does not work, move right does not work. Uh, we can see immediately why move right may not work, and that's because we haven't actually uh, connected uh, any code or logic to it. Um, what we're using for uh, movement here is the add movement input, uh, which will apply movement to a pawn, which is a um, which is a like a like a like a like a blueprint class that can be interacted with, that can be controlled and manipulated. Um, so we're going to drag our logic node onto that, and uh, you'll see that uh, this has a few parameters target, world direction, scale, value, force. Um, we are going to connect the axis value to scale value. Uh, the scale value is essentially like um, uh, on a percentage based like 0 0.5, 1.0, uh, or excuse me, 0 0.5 being 50%, 1.0 being 100%, uh, how much are we going to move um, essentially? Uh, basically like how fast, how powerful your movement is. Um, we're going to drag axis value into this. Axis value is the output of our input axis. So um, if we were to move the joystick left like halfway, 
this axis value would be 0 0.5 or negative 0 0.5, excuse me. Uh, and that would come out of here and into scale value and then it would add movement in uh, with that scale value in this world direction. Uh, and then that's how we get movement. So uh, if you'll come at look for come look at look forward, um, when we press W, because it's just like your keyboard, it, you either press W or you're not. Whenever you press W, it's like a 1.0. Whenever you're not pressing, it's a 0 0.0. So when you press W, uh, your axis value is 1.0, and that 1.0 is getting sent into scale value uh, as like 100%. Um, and then it applies 100% movement in this world direction, which is uh, positive on the x axis, and then nothing on the rest. So when you press it, it essentially just pushes your pawn up. Woo. Fun stuff. Uh, so yeah, we're going to connect our scale value, uh, hit play, and see what happens. So we can move up, we can move down. Uh, pressing A does nothing, and pressing D for some reason moves left. Um, let's continue fixing our D input. Um, there's nothing wrong in this code with it. Actually, I have trick two, and in project settings, I set one of the scale values here to negative 0.1. So essentially what's happening is uh, everything's working correctly, except I have inverted uh, the scale value of D. So instead of moving right, it's uh, inverting the value and actually moving left. Um, so we just, uh, you know, change that to a positive number there and hit play and pressing D should move who's right um we can move up down right but we cannot move left so let's go ahead and fix that um what's wrong is actually the world direction in add movement input what we want is uh to add movement in excuse me yeah move add movement um excuse me yes we want to add move it to the left so what we're going to do is put a negative one here uh, on the y scale because um, like positive y moves right, negative one moves left. So we're going to compile, save, and then uh, hit play. And then w moves up, s moves down, d moves right. Yay, a moves left. So we have fixed the movement inputs for our bean character. Congratulations. Do you have any questions on what I just covered? No. Okay, cool. Uh, well, then I will continue on to fix the rest. Um, all right. So, like I was talking about in our main menu, uh, let's actually re revisit that real quick. I don't know why it's called start menu. I would call it main menu, but that's fine. Um, let's open it. So, when you click play, again, you have um, this widget that has two buttons on it. Uh, that is drawn on top of your game view. Uh, we actually have one for our character, so whenever you play the game, uh, whenever you play the game, you should have like um, a heads up display that's giving you values of different things. Um, obviously, we don't have that here. That's our next problem. We want to display that. We've actually created it for you already. If you go to content, top down, um, blueprints, player, UI, we have the widget for the player. Double click it to open it, and you'll see we have player health, top left. Um, actually, these are gonna be points. No, this is health, this is gonna be points, and then this is like an interact, uh, what do you call it? Uh, notification that will pop up on your screen. Whenever you get close to an interactable, you can press E, interact with it. That's just telling the player that they can interact with it. Um, what's wrong is that this is actually not being drawn at all. Um, to fix this, let's uh, go to our character where we would actually um, uh, view this HUD. Um, so essentially, when we create our player, we want that player to then 
uh, handle the logic for uh, creating its UI. So when the project starts, when the map starts, it's going to uh, activate um, its default game mode. And we've already made that the top down game mode, top down game mode, yeah, that we um, uh, fixed before. Um, right here, uh, we changed the default pawn class. So, what's going to happen when you play the map is it's going to activate this game mode. This game mode is going to then activate this default pawn class, which is our top down character. And then this top down character is going to be spawned at our player start in our level with that default pawn class, which is our top down character. Um, and that way, and then when that happens, we're going to possess that character, and uh, upon creation of this character, it's going to do a few different things. Uh, we can specify what we want to happen when this character is created uh, with this event begin play node. So essentially, when this character is created and a level starts, um, this event begin play is going to activate. Um, and then we have a sequencer that's going to do a few different things. Uh, we'll get to what, the, uh, what these things are in a minute. Um, but one of those things, as you can see right here, is um, creating a widget. Uh, although, as we just went over, it's not working. Um, before I touch on this, uh, you should know that there's like essentially three different uh, default um, events on blueprint so i just created a new blueprint we're not actually going to use this but uh it comes with three default events which are essentially like um things that start uh or that activate blocks of code so uh we just talked about event begin play that activates and will do code that will run code um whenever uh, like the object is created uh we also have event actor begin overlap and this is going to execute code whenever like the physical volume of this object overlaps with the physical volume of another object uh and depending on what that object is we can specify like with the uh, other actor output here depending on what that object is we can run certain code and then we also have event tick that um well this essentially just um will uh, run the code that comes off of it every frame every tick, which is basically every frame, which, and every frame is basically uh, every time like the computer completes its code. So when you're playing a game, you have FPS, I'm sure you know what that is since you're a gamer. Um, your FPS yeah, it could be 60, it could be 144 um, frames per second. Um, this is essentially uh, every frame or, yeah, so like every frame is a representation of every time your c the computer completes cycling through all of the code and then it will execute all of the code uh, or all of its code like for example 60 times every second and so um, because of that and because FPS can vary wildly second to second moment to moment um, uh, we typically don't use event tick uh, especially because it is also harm harmful to performance um, but if we have to use event tick we will like divide it by a delta seconds and then uh, that would give you like instead of doing it like every frame it would do it uh, every certain unit of time uh, we can get into that later but then that's like these are your three default events and like I just said events will execute certain code you can have custom events like um, these input axes. So um, this is just another event, but these occur whenever you press one of the buttons that we specified in the input. Uh, yep. Uh, right, so whenever we begin play, we're going to create a player widget. Um, but then like this node is working, but we still don't see anything whenever we hit play. Uh, that's because we are, what this node is doing is simply just creating the widget and it's existing. However, we never, uh, specify to the computer that we have to, uh, that we want to add it <laughs> to the viewport. And so we're just going to create that node. Um, and then, oh, look, that should be good, right? 
nope sorry it's not um whenever we create our uh create a widget we specify the class so we're specifying uh the player widget because the player widget is the one that has like our player health or interact that kind of stuff um and this node itself will output uh that specific uh instance of that widget blueprint uh and then we can use this to target it uh and then uh so like it's going to output the reference for that in individual object and we're going to take this reference for that individual object and throw it in the target and so uh this add the viewport is basically asking like what instance of that object that we want to um add to the viewport and uh obviously it's the one that we just created so we're just going to drag that into that and then when we hit compile save and we play our touchdown map um then look at that uh, we have the UI up on screen. Uh, but you'll notice that as we go over points and coins, it does not increase our points, it does not increase our health, and when we go to the power up, it does not um, like show the press E to interact. In fact, when I press E, I can't even a interact with it. Uh, that's our next problem, is that the uh, HUD does not update uh, when we play our game. Actually, uh, let me just run through the objects real quick. So we have like a kill volume that's supposed to instantly kill the player when he goes inside. We also have a damage volume that's supposed to slowly take the health away from the player over time. Uh, we have points and coins which increase your score. We have health pickups which increase your health. And we have power pickup which upon interacting with it is supposed to give you a power up and change your character. Uh, so uh, if you'll notice, when we go inside of our damage volume, uh, oh, we just died. However, the entire time we were playing in, in that damage volume, it's like taking away our health. But if you look at the top left, uh, you can't actually see that it's taking away your health. Uh, it still just says 100. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, fix that. So um, open up your widget player. You're in, or excuse me your player widget and then you're in your designer tab go to your graph tab I have commented where the issue lies um, so here is a function called get health this is uh, essentially just um, updating the text within this block up here in the top left um, and it's going to update it with uh, whatever health our player character has. Uh, so in our main event graph, we have gotten a reference to the player that we're currently playing as for you already, and we've stored it as a variable. Um, and then we can reference that variable uh, anywhere within uh, our functions or our event graph. So we'll just like take, or this is, uh, this little block right here is, um, like uh, the variable reference. So whenever we use this, it's just referencing that variable that we have. Um, if you don't know anything about coding, well, we have a coding club. We also have coding fundamentals for this club videos like that. Um, we will also be making more uh, to catch you up to speed. So if you don't know what I mean by classes, blueprints, um, variables, that kind of stuff, functions, that kind of stuff, um, uh, those videos will get you caught up to speed. Uh, yeah, so anyway. Uh, this is a, uh, you can have variables, um, well, t okay, so typically, like, primitive, primitive variables are things like integers, uh, uh, doubles, which are numbers, but with, like, um, decimal places, uh, you can have st strings, which is basically just text, um, but you can also have, uh, variables that are references to objects, um, and that's essentially what this player variable is it's a reference to our to uh our specific instance of our uh character blueprint um i guess i should also tell you uh like this is a blueprint right here that we've been editing uh it's essentially just like the plans to make different uh instances of itself actually a better example is this coin right here so like this is a this is an instance of an object uh, the object being the uh, BP coin 10 object. Um, 
as you can see right here. So this is basically just like the plans that we use to make a bunch of different instances within the world of that object. So these are all literally just the same, but they're individual, um, but they're individuals of that specific uh, instance. And so whenever we hit play and create a character, we're playing with an in one instance of this player class. We could theoretically have more than one uh, instance of that guy. And so when I say this is a reference that instance, uh, I mean like the individual acting character that we create in this level, um, not like the class itself, if that makes any sense. If, again, um, we'll have coding videos. We do and we'll have more coding videos that uh, kind of explain that. Uh, that's like the fundamentals of like object oriented programming. So if you really wanted to, you could go and you don't know what it is, you could go online, look up like and see what object oriented programming uh, is. Uh, anyway, so with this reference to our uh, L character O, we are going to want to uh, read um, the health value of this character. So if we go in our top down character, it itself has a few different variables, those being health, max health, uh, points, can interact, interact object. What we're interested here is our health. Uh, this variable is going to be updated real time during gameplay with its current health and then whenever it like gets below zero, excuse me, when it gets below one, so it's either zero or less than zero, um, it's going to die uh, because it's run out of health. Um, and we want to essentially read that and we can do that only because we're casting to this character within our widget, um, which is essentially like accessing our character, the instance of that character. And then with that, we can do things uh, such as setting variables or getting variables or activating functions within. Uh, so setting a variable is uh, changing that variable. So if I were to set health, um, I could pretend to be, or excuse me, I could reference um, the instance of that character and then that instance of the character I would be setting its health to whatever I specify so like zero um, which would then of course kill that player but then we can also uh, get health which is um, uh, essentially uh, just reading the variable itself um, or I can activate specific functions within, so like, uh, we don't actually have individual functions for this. Okay, great. So if I were to like create a function called like, uh, jump, uh, okay. Uh, called I'm jumping. Um, I could then activate that function from here as well, uh, because I'm casting to it. Uh, let's just go ahead and delete this function. We don't actually need it. And we're not going to use it. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah. Uh, what we want to do in our get health is uh, use that player reference and then as that player essentially um, get our health. Um, and then this health, what we're doing right here uh, is basically the same thing as uh, within our character, like getting health. Bruh. Um, which essentially is just a reference to that variable. So like this is a integer number uh, that is our current health. And then this is also a, like the same thing, literally the same thing, um, which is a number. Uh, well, it's a primitive int integer variable. Uh, what we want to return is a string variable though, so we can uh, change this from an integer into a string. And when you just drag to um, this text input, uh, the Unreal Engine is going to very handedly automatically give you a to text converter. Uh, so if you compile and save and then go into here, you'll see in the top left, we now have just a number. Uh, and as we go into a thing, you can see that it it's uh, 
uh, updating real time with our current health. Um, however, this doesn't really help the player because like when they get in, they're gonna see just like a number. It's gonna be, like, it's gonna be confusing. They're not gonna know what it is. They're gonna have to you know use trial and error to s you know figure out what it is instead of just reading and looking and seeing what it is. So uh, what we want to do is have the words health and then the number so the player knows that they're looking at the health number. Uh, and we're gonna do that by converting, again, converting this health integer into a string and then splicing that string together with another string. So what we're going to do is drag this onto here, convert it into a string. Um, and then uh, with that string that says 100, we're going to combine that 100 onto the end of this health string or the string that has health semicolon, excuse me, colon, and then space. Uh, and so it's just like combining those two. And then that combination of those two is going to be converted into text and then put into this uh, return node. So we're going to save and run. And then if you look at the top left, we have health 100. And then bada bing, bada boom, that health is being drained. Wow, congratulations. That is working as intended. Um, Wait, how did you make the thing in between the the string, like the string converter? The string converter? Okay, so yeah, Unreal right. is um, very nice uh, in the fact that you can literally just drag this uh, primitive integer and then put it in, like, hover over the um, string node, and then when you let go, it's going to convert it for you and add a conversion node. Oh, so, yeah, I got it, I got it. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So it's very uh, handy in that regard. Wait, when I did it, my health thing disappeared. Like my numbers. Uh. Huh. Um. Well, I'm going to see. Okay, so like right after I end the stream, I'm going. I'll help you with that. Uh. But I don't want to like interrupt the flow of this, especially since other people are going to be watching this. Uh, at a later time. Uh, so. Right after I end the stream, I'll help you with that. Uh, kill volume. Right. Okay, cool. So, uh, as you can see, the damage volume uh, subtracts health uh, correctly. And then when we reach zero, we die. Um, we want the kill volume to instantly kill the player. Uh, but as you can see, uh, it's not killing the player. And that's what we want to fix right now. Uh, the kill volume is literally the same thing as the damage volume, except it's got different values in its parameters. Um, so if you click on it, look at the details panel, you'll see there's two things called tick amount and tick time. Um, damage volume also has the same thing because it's the same object. Uh, its tick amount is negative 20 and its tick time is half a second. So what this is doing is basically every, every half second, so two times a second, it's going to subtract uh, or no, it's going to add negative 20 to our character health. Um, uh, but if you click on our kill volume, um, its tick amount is 1.5 and its tick amount is zero. What's happening is every one and a half seconds that we're in this kill volume, it is going to subtract nothing from our character. And that's the issue. We want to um, subtract um, enough health that we instantly kill the player um so how do we well what number do we specify well let's come look at our max health uh variable it's 100 so as long as we subtract 100 or more uh then we will kill the player so let's just do negative 200 um cool and then now when we go into our kill volume we should die yes we do uh, but we still have another problem with our parameters, and that is that we can jump into the kill volume and jump out and be completely fine. We don't want that because we want the kill volume to kill the player instead of just letting him run through it. Uh, so we are going to change this tick time to 0 0.1, so it's going to activate relatively instantly. Um, and so now when we enter the kill volume, yep, kills the player. Congratulations, uh, your kill volume is working. Uh, onto the next 
issue and that is as you can see when we enter our damage volume and kill volume uh we die and the game pauses but um nothing really happens after that we have created a death screen ui for you already um but the problem is it's not actually showing so if we go to our top down character again um and we go down to uh, our death handler, which is where we do things upon death. Uh, this is where you're going to see uh, your problems. Um, so like we did for the um, initial UI, we're going to want to create uh, the death widget and then add that death widget to the viewport. So create widget. Um, and we want the class to be uh, widget death. So we're going to specify that. And then, uh, again, it's just going to create it, not actually add it to the viewport. So we got to add the add to viewport node. And we're specifying the instance of that object that we just created. And then file say, let's see what happens now. So we die. Oh, look at that widgets working as intended uh, however I cannot actually interact with it Ooh, how interesting um, so when we start the game and we start our character uh, uh, the last thing we do on event begin play is to uh, remove the mouse cursor uh, if we didn't remove this mouse cursor uh, when we start the game, uh, when I interact with it, I can play the game like normal, but then I can also see my mouse on screen as I'm moving it, which is uh, not fun. I'm sure you've run into this bug playing like Call of Duty or something, uh, and your mouse is just like flying all over the screen. It's very distracting. We don't like it, so we turn it off during gameplay, but we never turn it back on so that we can interact with the death menu. Uh, and that's where the next problem lies. Uh, you'll see that we actually have the set mouse cursor uh, node here uh, and it is activating although it's got the wrong target uh, we have a git player controller uh, node which is getting the uh, um, controller for the uh, whatever character that a specific player is using um, right now we are uh, indicating player index of one so you might think uh, that means player one. However, uh, that's not the case. Uh, the correct answer is zero, and that's because traditionally, whenever you're working with uh, uh, software, lists start at zero. So, for example, if I had like a list of um, uh, kids in a class, the first kid would actually have an index of zero, and the second kid would actually have an index of one the third kid would have an index of two. So basically, if it's like kid number one, it, his index is whatever number, minus one, zero. Um, uh, and that you're gonna find that in whatever programming language you use. Uh, so we're actually gonna specify zero here because we are player number one. So our player index is zero when we play the game. And so um, you'll see my mouse cursor disappears. So we just f refix that and then boom, when we die, that screen UI and we enable the cursor again so now we can actually interact with this I can click replay and then that will just restart the level or I can click bean menu which is going to bring you back to the bean menu and I can click start again play the game woo so much fun okay so congratulations you just completed that um, that was issue number 11 we're going to move on to issue number 12 which is that the player cannot interact with the interact tables. So if you go over here to this power up, um, I can't press E to interact with it. If you'll go back to our project settings, you'll see we have E with the interact action mapping, and we have our uh, player UI that actually has the interact thing pop up. But uh, unfortunately, for some reason, uh, it's not. It's it's not it's not working. Um, uh, this is where we're going to talk about uh, inheritance.
for a second. So uh, if you'll navigate to our Blueprints folder uh, and in the Interactables folder, you'll see we have three different Blueprints. We have a we have the wood power-up, we have the sombrero power-up, and then we also have something called BP Master Interactable. Um, encoding, okay, so these are both Blueprint classes, and encoding classes uh, can inherit from other classes, uh, meaning like um, you can have one class be a parent of another class, uh, and that child class is going to inherit all of the uh, logic that's in the parent class. So like if you've got variables or methods or functions or code or anything like that, uh, the child is going to be able to inherit or is going to inherit all of those. And then you can either override those functions or change those variables or however you please. Um, and it's a way to uh, efficiently create uh, a bunch of similar acting classes. So if I had like, if I wanted to create a bunch of vegetables that all looked different, that all did different things, um, they act in similar ways. Um, so I would set it up to have like a parent vegetable class and then like a bunch of children classes that I just like change the look of and then like change, I don't know, like uh, different variables such as like size for, uh, but it's much easier to just change that variable than it is to create all of those classes one by one, and that's why we do inheritance. Um, and if you'll see here, that's what we've done, done here. We have uh, the sombrero and the wood being child classes of the master interactable. Um, the problem actually lies within the master interactable, so neither of these power ups are working at the moment. Um, so we're going to open up the logic for the master interactable and you'll see I have uh, commented where the uh, problem lies. So if you remember back when I talked about that uh, the three default um, event nodes, uh, this is one of them, this is on begin overlap. Um, uh, so essentially when this is overlapping, uh, it's going to... Uh, activate this code um, and this has a few different uh, parameters attached to it um, and what we're doing off of this node is casting again to our top-down character uh, that way we can access we can read its variables we can set its variables we can activate its functions uh, and then we are um, but the uh, but the problem lies within uh, what we're casting to so on the overlap, so this is like, uh, it's this overlap trigger. So when this trigger component, this volume overlaps with the player, uh, so like when the player goes inside this volume, uh, it's going to activate that overlap event. Um, and we're speci we're casting to uh, some other component that's overlapping with it. Uh, and when we cast to it, we check to see whatever this object here is, if it is an instance of our top-down character then we will do this code otherwise if it's not we're going to do something else actually let's uh, let's see this in action uh, let's just print string uh, to the console the print string essentially just uh, prints like some text on top of your viewport uh, this is used for um, developing as you can see it says development only this is uh, uses for debugging so like uh, you could put this anywhere uh, and then like you can uh, see the uh, value of certain things uh, so you can determine like where a bug is or just to make sure that uh, systems are interacting correctly. So uh, what I'm going to say here is uh, incorrect cast on master interactable VP. And so essentially we are casting to this other component but first we're checking to see if it's actually an instance of this class uh, if it is we are doing this code if it's not we're going to print out the string to the console we'll be able to see it in the top left of the viewport so let's compile and save and uh, see what happens when we actually enter that volume trigger so we're going into it and boom look at that incorrect cast on bt so uh whatever object this is in this other component parameter parameter is the incorrect object um, 
what we should actually be doing is using this other actor um, parameter as the object. Uh, so whenever our character overlaps with that volume, uh, it the character actor player character is that other actor and then we are casting to it and because it is going to be the correct or it because it is going to be an instance of bp top down character it's going to activate this code um and we can see that in action as we into volume bada bing bada boom the interact pops up if i press e then the power up works congratulations we have just casted to the correct thing and we have fixed problem number 12 um a similar thing is happening with these points and coins. You can see, or excuse me, <laughs> yeah, the coins and the health pickup. Uh, neither is increasing the values in both the top left and top right. Um, so uh, we've set up the collectibles in the same manner uh, as um, the power ups. We have a master collectible that both the coin and the health pickup uh, are uh, children of. So let's open it and you can see, uh, same same issue here. Um, this is checking uh, for an overlap component, but we really want to check for whatever other actor we're overlapping. Uh, and then we cast to it and then we uh, handle functions based off of that. So let's compile save and then run it. And then as we go over points, Boom, you can see in the top right, our points are going up. We are successfully interacting with the points. Uh, you know, if I take uh, damage, I got 60. When I lock over the power-ups, I go back up to 100. Um, the next issue is that when we go over these collectibles and actually uh, get points and health, they don't actually disappear. Uh, this is uh, also located in the master collectible blueprint. Um, so uh, if you'll think back to that logic train that I talked about, how the computer um, executes code in sequential order, um, what we want to do is remove uh, both the coins and the health from the world when we interact with it. Uh, and we can do that by editing the code uh, within this master collectible. Uh, that's because, again, these coins and these health pickups are children classes of this master collectible. So they're going to inherit the logic of this thing. So if I were to just to change uh, the functionality in here, it's going to trickle down and change the functionality into these two classes. Um, so. Uh, let's do that. Right after we handle uh, it being collected, we are going to uh, destroy actor. So these are all actors, actor classes, um, and we are going to destroy it uh, when we uh, collect it and its target being self. We'll make sure that it's destroying itself. If we really wanted to, we could destroy any other actor. So, for example, we can uh, use our top-down character, uh, drag that into destroy actor, um, and then when we go over the things, it's just going to destroy our character. Um, we don't want to do that, however. Uh, this is like the incorrect way of killing the player. You really don't want to destroy it. Um, you just want to, or yeah, okay. You don't want to destroy your character because we are handling death in a different way um, on our character so if you go back to our top down character we have our death handler which uh, as we've already fixed had like re enables the mouse cursor and then activates the widget the death widget so that we can like uh, restart the game go back to the main menu that kind of stuff uh, if we destroy the character as you just saw we don't actually get the widgets we can actually interact uh, uh, not fun for the player, they just have to all F4 since it can't actually do anything, so that's why we don't destroy the character. Upon death, we just handle its death, set its health to zero, and then uh, handle its death that way. Uh, but leaving this blank will just make sure that it's destroying itself. Um, so now when we test and we go over coins of points, you'll see that we still collect points in the top right. 
and then the actor is destroyed that's because we uh, handled the collecting of the coin before we destroyed it if we did this out of order for example uh, and we went over it it would not work so uh, I'm sorry yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so we have now fixed the interactables. They um, now m move away, or excuse me, get destroyed, and also increment our values. Um, so we are nearing the end. We've only got two more issues to solve in this broken template. Uh, as a reward for convenience four, we have included a very cool sombrero power up for your little bean character. Uh, why don't we just go ahead and collect that? I think I've discovered our next error. So these blocks uh, are not allowing me to move up the ramp to get to the sombrero. Uh, if they acted like these blocks at all, I would be able to push them out the way and then get up the ramp. Uh, but unfortunately they don't move when I hit them. Uh, why is that? Well that's because um, uh, we never enable physics on these guys so they are just static and they will stay in place and no matter what other physics item hits them they're just gonna stay uh, where they are. Um, these are actually a blueprint uh, you can search for it in the gosh darn content browser but if you really don't want to do that it's even easier is if you just click on it, you select it in the world, and if you look at the world outliner on the top right, you'll see there's a link that says edit the blueprint for it. Whatever thing you have selected, so you just click that, it's going to open it up. Uh, it's much quicker than searching in the content browser, uh, so that's something there for you. Um, if you look at the details panel for this physics block on the right, um, and you scroll down to... Right, okay, so select your cube um, component in the top left, uh, and if you scroll down to physics, you'll see that we never uh, in simulate physics for this object. So if we were to check that, compile and save, uh, then now when I move into them, they should be pushed aside, and they are. Although, uh, something is very wrong with their gravity uh, and that would be the fact that we never actually enable their gravity so if you come down here same section you click enable gravity uh, then they will fall uh, and they will act as anticipated by the player when they move into them so bada bing bada boom uh, they acted uh, in conjunction with what I would expect as a player so my immersion is not broken it's just a game design kind of thing uh, bada bing bada boom little side tangent uh, if we disable gravity we're gonna be able to see what I'm about to talk about uh, more in effect in a second um, you got two, two more things here linear dampening and angular dampening uh, these are gonna be useful um, for you if you have anything that's like zero G in your game. Uh, linear dampening essentially, uh, or both of these kind of like simulate uh, basically like air thickness, uh, air physics. Um, so if you see, if you'll take note, when I come in here and I run into these blocks, uh, they're just flying in the world at a constant speed. Uh, we can uh, over time slow down that speed kind of like air friction if we increase our linear dampening uh, it's going to slow down uh, its displacement over time it's so like it's moving at a speed but eventually it's going to stop moving uh, let me just increase it so that you can see its effect better Uh, so yeah, like that, they're slowing down to 
essentially moving uh, yeah okay so they have all they've all stopped now so if we didn't specify or if we didn't increase this value they would just be moving at a constant speed um, that's for displacement angular dampening uh, as you can see they were rotating uh, quite fast if we were to apply any angular dampening when we run into them uh, before they were spinning but now if we run into them they're going to spin, but their spin is going to slow down. That's just angular dampening. Angular dampening slows down rotation. Uh, linear dampening slows down movement. So, yeah, that's going to be helpful for you in certain situations. Um, anyway, so we just enable gravity and set physics. We fix the block. We push them out the way. They act like we... Eh, whoa, I did not re-enable gravity. <laughs> they, uh, now they act as anticipated and I can access this hat uh, interactable <laughs> sombrero except there's a really unpleasant explosion sound that was correlated with this sombrero uh, that's going to be the final fix that we do um, we want to play a pleasant sound for the player when they interact with the sombrero so it's a happy moment instead of a startling moment so let's open up the um, sombrero blueprint, which is a child of the master interactable, uh, and um, we have a function here that will play a sound. This is activated whenever the player interacts with it. It's handled in the interaction, uh, but essentially, um, it's going to spawn a sound at the location of its um, of it, um, and that sound currently is collapse one. You change it to literally anything you want um, but uh, let's uh, let's do start a music um, compile a save and now whenever we interact with the sombrero we're going to get some radical tunes my guy oh, yeah. okay so congratulations those are all of the um, errors in this broken template fixed um, you're going to want to fix these in the game in order to learn a little bit more about the game. Just logic behind it. Um, and we are going to be uh, expanding on this template next week, which is going to be very interesting because you guys uh, tend to take these in a while in different directions. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. I uh, hope this walkthrough video helped. Uh, other than that, I will be answering questions right after this, so just unmute yourself in Discord and 